Welcome to Church on the Rise. It is our hope that you are encouraged, enriched and enlarged as you listen to this week's message. Well, welcome this morning to this, our vision launch. And if you're new here today, this is not a normal Sunday. I don't quite know what a normal Sunday would look like uh, here at Church on the Rise, but, but this is, this is not, not it. We're going to take a bit of time to look practically at some of those things that we believe God's put on this church to outwork in this community over this year. And so we're going to take some time to look at that. I'm going to share for a bit first and then look at some of those practicals. Uh, This year we've also printed up a vision booklet and I've been very deliberate in not handing that out to you before because you'll be reading it and not listening to me. I, I know you people and you're easily distracted and so uh, so we'll be handing them out. So make sure you grab a hold of, of one of these um, as you make your way out this morning. There'll be people standing standing up the back to hand them out. But, but what we're going to be sharing today, thanks Deb, what we're going to be sharing today is the specifics for 2019. And over the rest of the month of February, we're going to be looking and unpacking the vision, mission and culture and core values of this church, not just for this year, but who God's called us to be. You know, every, every family looks a certain way. There's certain distinctives and qualities that they have upon them. And God's marked this church with some particular distinctives. And we want to go through that and share that with you over the rest of February. It's the who, the what, and the why of COTR. But before we get into some of the specifics for 2019, I want to talk with you today on the topic of unity. And I've titled today, You Can't Stop a Team with a Dream. Everybody say that with me. You can't stop a team with a dream. You cannot. And this topic centers around two of our core values that we'll be looking at as a church over the next coming weeks. One of those being team and the other being unity. But for today, you can't stop a team with a dream. The topic of unity, God addresses over and over and over again throughout the Bible, right from the start all the way till the end. Unity in relationships, in in marriages, in communities, in the body, in the church. And as a church, our unity or disunity is of incredible importance to God and to us. And it will ultimately either help if we're unified or hinder if we're disunified our ability to be all that God has called us to be here in this community. A divided church is a weak, immature, defeated church. It was the prophet Amos who asked the question, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Well, the obvious answer to that is is no. No, no, they can't. But a unified church, well, that's something altogether different. A unified church, you, you can't stop. You, you can't stop a team with a dream. I think we've all heard stories or seen movies of sports teams throughout history that when you look at them as a group of individuals and measure them up against other teams they just pale into insignificance yet somehow they found a way to be better than just a group of average individuals they discovered a way to become an amazing team teams that ultimately went on to win world cups world series and grand finals Teams that, as I said, statistically, if you were to look at them, they're just nowhere near as the other teams that they were up against, yet they won. It was the philosopher Aristotle who said these words, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That what God can do through an ordinary group of people, I would never call you average, But what God could do through average people that discover the power of unity and learn how to become a team. Because you can't stop a team with a dream. 
was the Apostle Paul who likened the church to a body where every part, every part did its part. What good would a, would a hand or a finger be if it wasn't attached to the body if it just lied there on the floor? would be unable to outwork the very thing that it was purposed and designed for. We're designed to be together. We're better together. We're designed for unity and community. It's in the book of Genesis is recorded the account of an incredible feat accomplished by a community in unity, accomplished by a team or a body. And reading from Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 8. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, is, If as one people, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. They were looking to make a name for themselves. We are looking to make His name famous. You can't stop a team with a dream. This is God who came down and said that because they're in one place, they're one people with one language speaking the same thing. You can't stop a team with a dream. In 2019, Church on the Rise, we move forward with a vision and with a dream to impact our worlds. And if we continue to truly become a community, having a common unity, I, I don't know if you, I say this every so often, I don't know if you ever stop to think and look around the people to the left and the right of you. If it were not for Jesus, would we be in the company that we're keeping today? We have a common unity. Ultimately, it's Jesus, but as a church here at Church on the Rise, it gets to be more specific and, and, uh, and, and deliberate and intentional than that. I believe, I believe, if we continue to truly become a community, nothing will be impossible for us. Nothing will stop a team with a dream. Things may hinder you. They may ca cause you to change your course and come at it from another angle. But nothing will stop a team with a dream if we continue to be unified. You look at great marriages. I can assure you, as I'm sure you are all well aware for any of us that have been in a relationship for any length of time, that even in good marriages that just look perfect from the outside, I can assure you that there has been turmoil and trial and a hell of a lot of forgiveness that's gone. I don't know if hell of a lot's the right terminology there. A heck of a lot of forgiveness that's gone on in that marriage. But if you stay unified, if you stay together, one purpose, one language, there's nothing, there's nothing that can stop a team with a dream. But it all hinders on two things. Firstly, we've got to get in the game, as it were, to use the, continue on with the sporting analogy. I don't know whether you've discovered this, for those of you that love sport, but spectators don't win games. Players do. They can help. I've also been sitting in the members' box at the Lions with Lions supporters cursing their team because they're playing horribly. So uh, I don't think it's not always encouraging, but uh, players win games, spectators don't. So for us to be able to do, for us to be able to be a team, 
that achieves its dream that can't be stopped, we, we need to be people who are in the game. And secondly, we have to be committed to the unity of the team. Divided, there's, there's no point even trying. But together, unified, that's where God commands His blessing. God looks and He goes, where, where, where's a place where I can command my blessing? And He looks and He sees a family and they're unified. And He says, there, there, that, that's, that's the place. Right there, that's where I command my blessing. Where we're brothers, where we're sisters, where family dwell together in unity. God says, it's there, it's in that place that I command my blessing. That when we're unified, when we're one heart, one purpose. So the Apostle Paul encourages us and challenges us and warns us to make every effort, he says, make every effort to preserve the unity. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort, every effort, every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Unity flows from humility. It's hard to be unified when we've got this sense of arrogance and pride about us that we know best. Oh, they should just do it like this. Why don't they? No, unity flows from humility. Unity flows from gentleness of spirit. Unity flows from having patience, that P word that we all love so much. Patience. I just exude patience. We all have to bear with one another do you get the 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 bearing it's this weight we have to bear maybe you've had to bear with me it's okay it's okay i've had to bear with you all but don't we at times don't we don't we at times and so it's not about uniformity it's about unity god created us so diverse so unique, so wonderful. It's not about being a cookie cutter, but it's that, 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 that wording as they built this tower. One voice, one language, one people, one purpose. It's there in that place that God commands a blessing. So we can have such a diverse amount of opinion, but yet be unified in purpose, be unified in heart. Be unified in the mission that God's called us to here at church on the rise. I can disagree with so much about what you do and how you choose to live your life, but I can be behind you 100% and be for you as a person and edify you and lift you up. We need to be for each other. Make sure the words, again, as I was praying, and it's just come to me now, that, that the words that we speak when it comes to unity, that we continue to speak each other up. You know, we talk about so, so many sins that we like to name and point out in other people, but can I say that gossip is just one of the most damaging things to unity and to the body, to the image of God and other people, to dignity and worth? If you're going to talk about people, talk them up. Don't talk about people. Talk people up. We'll be held account for every idle word that we speak, church, every word that we speak, and it pulls at the fabric it's like a loose thread and it pulls at the fabric of unity. But when we're unified as a body, it's there in that place. God's heart's drawn. He says, I command it. It must be so. They will be blessed. Church, I encourage you on every occasion to make every effort to fight to keep the unity protect it to preserve it to fight for one another because nothing can stop a team with a dream we've been made for such a time as this 
And I've been sharing all through the month of January that I believe that God's been saying to us, come on, church on the rise, let's get going. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go out into all our worlds and preach the gospel, to bring the good news, to make disciples, to baptize, to tell everybody, Jesus said, those things that I've commanded you. And Celeste was sharing about it just moments earlier, to get out there and be who God has called us to be. So a big part of our vision for this year will be unpacked in our missions, in our discipleship, in our outreach. So let's begin to work our way through this a little bit. Let's get a little bit practical about what we're believing for this year. Well, February, wow, we're already here. It's February. A twelfth of our year is already gone. I know, isn't it depressing? Sorry to depress you this morning. But how, like you think a month's not long, but it's a twelfth. Twelfth of the year is already gone. You know, have we, have we, made, it, have we made it count? A twelfth. Oh my goodness. Anyway, let's, let's not focus on that. But uh, February is our vision month specific to 2019 today and uh, specific to who God's called us to be for the rest of the month with our cultures, our values and, and, uh, and our mission. But the month of March will be our missions month. And this will most likely be the case going forward into the coming years. The month of March will be centered around our missions and our outreach giving. Instead of taking offerings up all throughout the year to say, hey, church, here's this need. We want to take up an offering for that today. And we also support this, you know, so next month we're going to take up an offering for that. What we want to do is we just want to set aside the month of March to take up all our missions giving for everything that we're involved in as a church to support it all throughout the year, to take it up over one month. The concept is one heart, one day. And the idea is for us all to give one day's wage and to raise another day through friends and family, effectively totaling two days' wages. We give one day and we raise one day. The great thing about this is I know that some people will want to give two or three days, and I know of people who will be looking to give a week's worth of wage. But the goal is for us all is to contribute one day's wage and to raise through friends and family another day's worth. One day's pay, one day raise for missions and for outreach. Who thinks that's a great idea? I think it's a fantastic idea, and uh, I'm going for more than, than one day. Moving forward, our missions will be both local and international, and it will consist of both financial giving and hands support. I think it's really important, and, and as I've been crying out to God and praying to God about what He has put upon us, us as a church this year, I think it's extremely important when we think about missions and outreach and discipleship, we don't always go to financial support because in a way, like we need to do it, we need to give and we're going to do it. We have been doing as a church and we'll continue to do it. But we can't outsource our own Christianity. We are, have been called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We need to witness. We need to engage. We need to sit across the table and share the good news of Jesus Christ with people. We can't outsource our Christianity. So it's both financial support and hands-on support. In 2019, as a church, we'll be partnering with Destiny Rescue and the amazing work that they do in rescuing young children from the sex trade industry. They are both based locally on the Sunshine Coast, so it's fantastic for a partnership with them. And they have a long track record of incredible success and also amazing integral financial stewardship. As a family, Kelly and I and the girls have been connected with Destiny Rescue for a few years now, and our daughter Ella is a youth ambassador for them. There's a clip that I wanted to show us all today, but it was a little bit maybe too sensitive for a, for a Sunday viewing, and I don't think you all wanted to see me cry as well. And uh, I'm sending it out and attaching the link via email this week during our, uh, through our e-pastor, so you can grab a hold of that and have a look at that. But we've got another clip here today, and it's a story of one girl who has been rescued, um, and her story as, uh, as by one of the rescuers. So why don't you uh, turn your eyes to the screens? One particular girl, she felt really compelled to work in a bar because... 
her dad lost his job. She was 15 years old and had no other desire except to help mum and dad and help the family get through tough times. Coming from a music background, I generally ask the girls, so what music are you into? And she replied with, oh, I'm into church songs. And that really stuck out for me because it's like, what do you know about churchy kind of songs? And she was telling me her story that night that she was a worship leader, that she was a Sunday school teacher. And um, and that she'd do anything to help mum and dad. I knew that we had to get her out ASAP. She, she was the most selfless person I've ever come across. And uh, it, it didn't take me long to, to break my cover and said, look, this is who I am, this is who I work for. I really want to help you and my team really wants to help you. Would you let us? And she broke down crying saying, I've been praying for someone like you. I've, I've been praying for an angel, a group of angels like you and your team. Yeah, I want the help, yeah. Mum and Dad need the help. And uh, over, over the next couple of months, she was able to finish high school and by the next semester into college and get a job at a call centre where she's safe, she works a day job, she works for pretty good money, she's helping out with family. And on top of all that, she's back in church worship leading again, leading Sunday school for the kids as well. So this huge turnaround, you know, from where she was to going through some dark times, um, you know, to being back in church and, and just loving again. You know? So I, I, I love that story of, of how, um, I don't know, like we, we all get that second chance and, and and it was so true for her. So, yeah. huh. so uh, that's what we're going to be supporting this year. Um, oh, excuse me. We're called to make a difference, church, in people's lives. We're called to make a difference. And it's easy for us here to disengage from the atrocities that happen all around us, and not just overseas, here, here in Australia as well. But uh, this is a great work that these guys are doing and uh, in rescuing and rehabilitating and training the young children from the sex trade. Uh, they don't just rescue them and get them out. They, they do an amazing work, working through the pain that these girls and boys have experienced as they've been sold, stolen, their parents have given them away uh, for this horrific lifestyle. And so I'm, I'm excited to be able to partner with an amazing work like Destiny Rescue that we as a church can have a part in saving lives, kids' lives from this atrocity. Isn't it amazing? Who agrees with that? Isn't that a good thing to be a part of? Amen. Amen. So uh, the other overseas partnership that we'll be involved with is in India. And uh, some of us may be aware, and, and a lot of us might not be, we've actually been doing this for some years, um, where we've been supporting a, a local pastor in India for the period of a year. The concept and the model is, is such that they send out a new pastor uh, to a new church plant after they've trained him up and uh, provide one year's wage for him to go out so that the pastor knows that they can just totally focus on outreach and getting into the community and know that there's going to be food on the table as they go out into uh, all over the place, all over India. I think this, this uh, local pastor is actually over the border into Nepal and um, they're not particularly warm to the gospel in Nepal. 
and um, they're not massive fans of it. And so these these young pastors um, are putting themselves in in great danger to be able to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And so. As a church, again this year, we're going to support one local pastor, uh, a new church plant, and a pastor to go out there and uh, and start churches up in India. They need Jesus, um, and so uh, that's that's an amazing thing. We'll also we always get the bios and stuff, and so we'll make that available as a church because they're faced with unique challenges. And I think that not only is the uh, financial support amazing, but uh, prayer works. Amen. And uh, we can support them and pray for them. So that's, that's the two areas of overseas mission that we're going to support this year. Locally, we are looking at strengthening a few areas of outreach and mission. And uh, one significant need that we have in our community is what, is what I'm calling temporary financial hardship. These are families where everything looks like it's fine. They've, they've got a home, they've, they've got a car, their kids are dressed well. Uh, but, but, but something's happened and, and they're doing it really tough. Dad's lost his job, the car blew up and they're seriously struggling to put food on the table. Well, we as a church want to help meet that need in our local community. And uh, so we want to partner with the local chaplains, with other community agencies and also with us. Hey, we all live in a community. And I think if we would be a little bit more observant and care to look around the corner a little bit more that we might discover that there's people that live in our street that, that might be doing it tough on any given point in time. And so we want to be able to identify and help these people and support them. And the great thing about this is, is not only are we, are we giving out, but there's the hands and feet touch of it as well. There's that connection that we're able to meet that need and uh, open up opportunities for them to be able to maybe get counselling, to speak with someone and so on and so forth. So we'll be providing food and care hampers for people and families experiencing temporary hardship in 2019 and beyond. Another local outreach is the STEM program. The ladies in our church have been a part of that for some many years and have been raising money uh, in their coffee group and taking up money for that for some years now. And we want to highlight this great work as a church. And I think that it's greedy that the ladies have been hogging it all to themselves. And uh, we want to support it and get behind that as well. We think it's an amazing thing. Basically, to really boil it down, uh, you know, you can get on STEM, have a website, you can find out all about what they do. But for, for sake of time today, I'm just rattling through. Um, basically, they help support young girls who have become pregnant, finish their high schooling. Um, so they provide support for them, financial, they, they give them classroom spaces where the kids are taken care of and so forth. And our church has helped provide over the years baby food hampers, care packs, fuel vouchers, and Christmas hampers for the girls. And we'll be continuing to do that and support that this year. Who thinks that's fantastic? Isn't it good? I think it's so good. Another group looking to start up in March will be coming together to knit blankets. Last year, they knitted 273 blankets that went to DV shelters, the homeless, maternity wards, ladies at the STEM program, and emergency housing. How good? How good? What another amazing way to install dignity, to display care and value and worth into people that live around about us. So our missions offering, One Heart, One Day, will be going to all these great works. And if you'd like to find out if and how you could possibly get involved in these projects and programs in a hands-on way, come and speak to me and I'd love to put you in touch with the right people. Uh, afterwards. But lastly, some of you may remember that last year I, sp I spoke about a particular opportunity to love on and engage our community called the Generosity Project that we are going to undertake this year in October. Over one weekend, we want to partner together as a church for us all to find one need in our community, just one need that one person has that we can meet with the resource, with the skills and the abilities that we have as individuals, that we could meet a need in our community. That could simply be to cook a meal, to wash a car, to mow some grass, to repair a fence, to pay for fuel, to pay for groceries. One thing that you can do with the gifts and the resource that God has given you to bless someone else that's in your world. The heart behind this is to move us from a church to just seeing needs 
Or maybe we're even another step back that we need to awaken ourselves to the fact that there are needs all around about us and lift our eyes and begin to notice people and notice need firstly, then to see the need and then to serve the need. It was about this time last year I, I shared a message moving from seeing to serving. Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan. There were three people who saw, but only one who did something about it to serve the need. We as a church need to continue to become people that not only see the need, but those who serve the need. So we're going to do that in this generosity project, all with the express purpose of simply serving our community. But it will provide us with the opportunity to connect and share why we would do such a thing when we are inevitably asked. When you just give because you can, because you love, people ask, that's not normal for the world. It should be normal for us, but it's not normal. Now, we should all be doing this in all our lives, all throughout the year on an individual basis, but but something of great impact is going to change in our hearts and in our communities. We band together on one day to make a statement to our neighbors, to our community that we are here to serve. I believe in God that this will grow in momentum. I believe that this is something that is going to stir and awaken the hearts of us as a church that we're going to be going, Mike, can we do this on another weekend? Can we do this over a few weekends throughout the year? I believe that this is going to gain significant momentum in our hearts and in the lives of our church. As we discover once again, maybe for some of us, it's been so long since you just reached out and just loved on someone to go, yeah, I can't believe how God just showed up in that moment. I can't believe how easy it was. I can't believe I just needed to be the person that God's called me to be and look at the impact and the change that it made. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. But beyond just an individual outreach and serving, the generosity project will also involve us collectively as a church, as we, as a team, as a board, identify one larger need in our community that we can pool all our resources together and meet a need in our community. It could be to refurbish a, a local retirement village hall. It could be do up a local community center, a classroom but where we can pull all our collective resources together and make a contribution to this community. So both an individual project and a collective project. I can't wait. I am so excited. There will be lives that are impacted from this. Not to say the very least your own. So that's our missions and outreach focus for this year. We're, we're running out of time, so I'm going to rattle through the rest of this, in keeping with our theme for the year, behold, become, behave, all of these have really focused on our behave, and I really believe that's where God is calling us to focus on, but we also want to continue to help one another as a church to become. <coughs> last year we, excuse me, last year we ran our first Sharing Jesus Without Fear course, and we'll be running that again this year. We've had incredible feedback from those who participated last year. And as a church, we need to continue to be equipped to go out into all our worlds and share the good news of Jesus Christ. On top of that course, we'll be running other discipleship courses on biblical foundations to help us teach that to others. Jesus said, go and teach them what I've taught you. So we're going to continue to do that in our discipleship. Over the month of July will be our Heart for the House offering, where we'll be receiving the offering for the continual expansion of the facilities here at COTR. Some feedback on 2018. We have finally received some drawings. I can't tell you how painful it is for me. It has just taken so painfully long. I don't know if you've discovered uh, some of my personality, but I'm not a particularly patient man. I like things moving. I like things going, and my patience have been tested. It's taken so long, but we finally received the drawings back. They're to go to the engineer, from the engineer to the certifier, and then we can finally build something uh, with our money and with our, our sacrificial giving. So it's, it's progressing. It's very slow, but it is, it is moving forward. And as a church, we've been able, with your giving, to set aside $42,000, which is an incredible result. In it. Well done to us. Yay, us. How good's that? 
But this year we'll be looking at furnishings for the cafe, tables, chairs, lights and fans. You know, the, the 42 is just going to provide the cover, so we need to finish it all off underneath there. Uh, as you walk out into the deck, you notice that that part of the deck is cut off on a 45 degree angle. We want to fill that in and make that square so to build a deck up so we could look at doing that this year with our giving. We also want to uh, take some time and spend some money on doing up our, our kids' rooms and our kids' facilities, also looking at spending some money on resource in there. And uh, depending on the amount, the amount raised, we'd also like to look at the front entrance of the church, possibly making that a little bit better for uh, accessibility and all-weather entrance and all that kind of stuff as well. So we'll be talking about that more as, as it gets a little bit closer, but just wanting to give you a snapshot of, uh, of where we're going and what we're looking at. And so you can be praying. It's in the month of July. You can be praying into that, what God might lay upon your heart this year to contribute to that as well and uh, it is around the time july around the time where we put in for our tax returns so uh, maybe you like many people did uh 2018 set aside your tax return to be able to go for that so be praying for that that's going to be awesome along with our theme for this year we're going to continue to behold and uh, we'll be running our worship nights throughout the terms as well so Stay tuned for those nights. It's just where we set aside the time. We push the chairs back, create room, create space, and, uh, and worship and give God and the Holy Spirit time to move in our lives. Who knows? We need the empowerment of heaven to change earth. We need Holy Spirit. So listen out for those. We'll also be running quarterly women's brunches and men's events again this year. So stay tuned for those dates and times. We'll be continuing with our once a term leadership nights for discipleship with training, input and connection for everybody that serves in the life of the church. And so we'll speak in greater detail about all these things throughout the year. But before I finish today and pray for our unity and this dream that God has given to this church, I just want to highlight two things. Can I say, I, I, I would just so love to see more connect groups in this church. Uh, we are called to be disciples and we are also called to disciple. And small groups are just an incredible way to see this happen. If, if we're to think that Sunday morning is the entirety of what Jesus had in mind when he said, go and make disciples, we are so, we're falling so far short. We can't have those deeper level discussions here today on a Sunday um, because I'm talking and we're not sharing <laughs> in that sense you know it's sunday sunday's the equipping for going out but that deeper level of discipleship it, it's the, there's just no better environment th than a small group environment but uh I, what i can tell you church is i'm not running 12 connect groups and uh I, I'm, I'm not doing it i'm not that good uh, i'm not even going to pretend that i am usually i'll pretend i'm that good i'm not even that good i'm not doing that but uh I know that there's people that have been sitting here that, th that have had that on their heart thinking, you know what, I, I, I want to I host a connect group. Um, but maybe it's time you, you, you don't want to give up your Wednesday night. Um, you know, maybe you're a little bit nervous. But if that's you, I would love for you to come and speak to me um, at some point in time. We, we, we want to see connect groups where people flourish in God, where we discover more of who God is. We can be open and vulnerable in a small group. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to be open and vulnerable here. So we're looking forward to, do, to doing that. I'd love to speak to you. Uh, let it never be said of this church that you can't serve or outreach. I've never said no to anybody's preparedness to serve or to go out into our community or to be a discipler. If you feel held back, I can tell you it's not from me. We want to release everybody, everybody into their God-given call. And secondly, church, we need more team. Men, we need more guys for set up and pack down. At the moment, we have a faithful few, and some of them are serving in multiple areas. This is, this is our home. We don't just come to consume, we, we come to contribute. If you are a visitor here today, you sit. We, we, we want to wait on you. We want to love you. You know, it, if my home, when we meet you for the first time and we invite you over, uh, we don't want you to bring anything. We just want you to come, and we're going to wait on you. We're going to serve you. We're going to love on you. And, you know, the second time we're probably going to do that the same. But, you know, the 10th time, someone might throw you a tea towel. <laughs> and you might be handed uh, a bag of rubbish on your way out to put it in the bin as you head out. Because you're no longer a visitor, you're family. And family pitches in. Amen. 
we are not consumers, we are contributors. And so I think this current generation, and even for those of us that are older, it can kind of rub off on us a little bit, and there's this consumer mentality. And so I don't know if you're aware, but those tables and chairs didn't magically appear outside. and They don't magically pack themselves up. Uh, people set them up to create a space of welcome, warmth, and inclusivity for all of us. And so uh, if you're not doing anything in the life of the church, I've just got this feeling that 2019 is your year. I don't know. I've just got, I've just got this feeling that, that, it, that it's your year. So uh, you know what? And, and beyond just fulfilling a task, it's just great to be part of a team. And once again, it's, you know, if you're not feeling connected, join a team, you know, be part of the team. So we need kids team, setup team, hosting team, cafe team. And once again, come and speak to me after the meeting and I'll uh, point you in the right direction. Our ability to do more for God and through God is a human resource issue. More team, more dream. We are only limited by resource. Amen. God's not wondering, what could I do? What could I do? God's got more dream than we could handle. Well, that's just a snapshot of some of which we'll be focusing on this year with a large focus, as I said, on our behave. Church, it's time for us to go. To go into all our worlds, to make disciples, to baptize, to tell everybody the great things that Jesus has done for us and that he wants to do for them. We have been called for such a time as this. Let's fight to keep the unity. Let's dream a big dream. Let's get in the game. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. If I could have the worship team back. And uh, as the worship team come, just uh, let me pray for you this morning. Father God, we just thank you that uh, you say that it as we dream, you're the God who does exceedingly above all we could ever ask, dare, dream, or think. So even as we share about the things that you've placed upon it, that's a big dream, Lord God. There's some big things that we can get involved in this year. But Lord God, you say that you, that you do exceedingly above that. As we do our bit, we, we've been speaking about this over the coming, as we bring our little lunch, as it were, as we bring the little that we have. The need is so big, but we bring the little that we have. You always make up the lack. We shared last week about the woman with the oil. She only had a little jar, but, but God, when we keep presenting what we have, you, you, you make up the lack. So this morning, Lord God, I pray as you look down, I pray that you would see a, a, a family where you go there, there, church on the rise, Calandra, there I command my blessing. In that place, in that place, there, there's, there's unity. They're, they're for one another. They're, they're for what I'm calling this church too. That, that even though Lord, they, they disagree, on that, oh, I don't like what that person, how they, but, but, but I'm for them and, and, and we're unified and we, we don't speak about people, but we speak people up. I pray, Lord God, when you look down on this place, when it comes to unity, you'd be well pleased. You'd be happy with the conditions of our hearts, Lord God, that you'd be happy with the words that we speak that they would bring life, that they would edify. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that as, we, as we've just briefly gone, on, gone over some of those things, Lord God, that we're going to undertake this year in faith, stepping out in faith with you, I pray that you would stir in the hearts of many. Awaken dream, awaken passion, awaken desire, awaken expectation. As we've said for too long, oh, I don't know, I don't know, Lord God, for those people that are sitting there going, yeah, I think I should be running a connect group. Lord God, stir our hearts, Lord God, to be the church that you've called us to be. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Thank you, Les. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this week's message. If we can help you in any way, please get in touch with us via the web at caloundra.churchontherise.org.au.